Good evening, everybody. This is Nathan Chan. This is Nanette Chan, right? Can you do Nanette? Say hi. And we are here with three lovely gentlemen, or two and a half men, because this guy looks like him, right? Okay, so are you guys proud surrogates or proud, proud what? No, get out of here. <laughs> intended, intended parents. Proud intended parents. So um, this baby, what's his name? Cameron. Okay, so you did not carry him full term yourself? We did not. Okay. <laughs> and how did how did Cameron come into this world? Uh, we had the wonderful help of a uh, surrogate. Okay, and then also an egg donor too. Right? Yes. 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 Hey, Cameron, over here. Come here. Cameron, come here. Come here. Oh. Nanette has a question for you. Oh. Nanette, can you ask him a question? Do you have a tummy mommy? Uh, a tummy mommy? Are you becoming with me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So um, we don't. Ha we often have. We often have intended parents. You just let me go. Okay. We often have intended parents who only kind of join us when their child is just born. But clearly, how old is Cameron now? Actually. Two. <laughs> That's oh, right. Two. He'll be two on January first. Wow. He was a January first baby. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure he's not jumping. He's fine. Oh dear. Okay, so why did you have to turn to surrogacy? Um, we originally did weren't even uh, sure that we were gonna be parents, um, um, and then it took it took a while, right, to realize mm -hmm. that this is an option for us. Uh, we asked around and did, did a little research. Yeah, and we also had a relative who had been through a. Uh, she's a single mom by choice, so she had a sperm donor, and so she also had some alternative way of becoming a parent, so she kind of inspired us and got us down this path. Of, of, it's a natural, it's all usually adoption or surrogacy for, for gay men, right? Yeah. So um, right away over to Cameron, how many tra embryo transfer attempts did it take for him to kind of come about and, and result in a live birth? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. One transfer. We were very lucky. Yeah, we were One very transfer lucky. and it was all done. Mm -hmm. And it was a relatively smooth journey or anything that was interesting on your journey? The transfer was, was pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Overall, the process was really, really good and we were surprised how, how, how smooth it was. Yeah, we were prepared for a lot more surprises along the way. Uh, and fortunately, that wasn't the case. Um, we did have one little um, surprise or um, potential issue, but it worked itself out, and it wasn't what we thought it would be. So that's good. So yeah, I was your surrogate actually had a kidney stone. Yeah, yes. And <laughs> I'm not. I'm very familiar with kidney stones myself, and having surgeries for it. But it was a huge scare because mm -hmm. we all thought that could be possibly the end of. Yeah. The surrogacy or the pregnancy, actually, mm -hmm. but um, lucky for you, I suppose, it was only a kidney stone. Not to, <laughs> yeah. not, to minim not to minimize that. So you know, sometimes mm -hmm. things can come up, and and then you think fear the worst. And I think that was a very big scare. Yes. Um, okay, well, let's get out of here <laughs> now. I want to ask you, what about the contact um, during pregnancy? Did you have any contact with your surrogate, or was she? Just kind of emailing you, or um, we had we had some we had contact, mm -hmm. um, but it was also that the timing was 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 a little bit off with the COVID. Mm -hmm. But we try to keep in touch. As, as so Cameron was a COVID baby. Yeah. Yes. He was at the very beginning. Yeah. Very beginning. Uh, so that kind of hampered your ability to kind of visit a little bit, perhaps, or yes, we were we had plans to visit our surrogate at least once during. The pregnancy but unfortunately the borders were closed at that time and so most of our contact was through facetime and text and phone calls and things like that okay do you still stay in touch with her or camera coming on like mm -hmm. do you guys still talk a little bit or we do we actually still are in contact with her um mostly through text um, and we did visit post birth as well okay you know what why don't we grab your son <laughs> and try to Try to just kind of remember the first time you held him in your arms. Here, grab him. Everyone. Oh. Let's grab him. Okay, so how did you, 
Oh, he's big. How did you feel the first time you held him in your arms? I, I think it was, uh, it was a very different feeling when they first are in your arms. It felt, felt like a miracle, but also Is he still a, a miracle. <laughs> a sense of responsibility sits on the okay, on, on him. Go, him go. Okay, so when he was. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> when he was a lot smaller, how did you feel? Like when did you did you ask yourself what's going on, or how did you feel? I mean, what was that? What was it like for you the first time to hold your son in your arms? I mean, you're you're taken aback and you're just kind of in shock. Um, for us, just because since we were unable to visit the surrogate during the pregnancy. It was, it was almost as if it wasn't real for a while because we were so far apart. And then it was a moment of, okay, the baby's born and now all of a sudden it just got real. Um, but definitely felt so grateful and so happy and relieved that everything went well because I think we all were just kind of holding our breath. Even though once you get to a certain point within the pregnancy, things are likely to be okay, but you still have that feeling that some things can still go wrong but exactly yeah. and the kidney stone that she had was quite far along it was um, yeah. and uh, not that kidney stones are bad at all but mm. you never know until you have a, a baby in your arms actually mm. taking that first cry that like you know she he is now safe and, and, and yeah. here is a miracle mm. you talked a little bit about great gratitude and grateful who are you grateful for um my gosh we're we're grateful for our egg donor that, that was willing to work with us. And then obviously our surrogate who sacrificed so much for family, sacrificed a lot. She sacrificed, you know, a year of her life for us to, to be there. It's not just a year too, like, whoa, your child is falling off. Okay. <laughs> um, it's also like the whole, after, after giving birth, it's not easy too, because you're kind of healing. There's a whole fourth trimester. And she was so, uh, she had a great relationship with you to the point that she was able to try again to give Cameron a sibling. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, so we, I mean, we, we started the journey with, with her and, and um, it, it ended um, not as well as, her, as we had intended. Um, unfortunately, I had a, had a uh, miscarriage. So that, that that was really really hard uh, on the second journey, and, and it was it was really it hit us pretty hard because uh, because of such the such that the first the first journey was went so well we kind of let our guard down a little bit about hey this one's gonna go well too we were very much prepared for things to go really well and we kind of got a, a dose of reality of yes things can happen and it's not always a guarantee. <laughs> Yeah, please, can you, can you stop? Okay. Yes, so a dose of reality, and, and that's, that actually is the reality, because a lot of intended parents have lots of success initially, and then they, they do a sibling journey or a third child, and it doesn't quite work out. <laughs> We're not trying to laugh about just kids. Yes, a bunch of kids. Um... <laughs> And so I guess you're now no longer moving forward with your surrogate, but you're still in touch with her, correct? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about how you healed? Obviously, this miscarriage did not just happen last week, but um, you know, how did you kind of like heal from this from this process? And, and where are you now in your process? I mean, you never completely heal from that. Is she also here? Yeah. And, and I think I think uh, we're, I mean, it took a while to process all of this. Mm -hmm. and, and we're at the point right now where we're actually um, you know, just looking to start our <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we took some time away uh, from our second journey, just to what Nathan was saying. You know, it's 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 hard to process it. Um, and and you never get over that. You know, loss. No, and it, it's 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 kind of one of those things where. You don't forget, but it just you're at peace with with what happened, and it happened, and you we we got to a moment where we're ready to move forward again. And so, did did a miscarriage hit you differently since you're men and you're not carrying the baby? Definitely felt. I think we kind of felt 
we felt bad and guilty and helpless actually when it happened because we felt bad for our surrogate who had again sacrificed for us but yet she was going through this or ordeal um and we couldn't be there to help her i mean i'm not we could do help her as a, a doctor but just there wasn't much that we could do for being so far right and so we felt like it was a difficult situation for us to be in but we mostly felt horrible for what she had to go through mm -hmm. and at the same time you also have to you had to also deal with your own feelings of mm -hmm. grief as well too okay so thanks for uh, sharing us with those challenges any words of advice to other intended parents um, who are in your same shoes of just in the middle of your process or, or waiting for a surrogate I think you did say something about good things come to people yeah. kind of wait and um, tell us a little bit about that yeah our, our first journey started I mean gosh by the time we had our from the moment we had our um, console call with you to the very end I think it ended up being two years and then which is extremely fast to get an egg donation mm -hmm. completed matching with a surrogate mm -hmm. and then having a, a fairly uncomplicated pregnancy mm -hmm. which is insane yeah. your child's turning on the TV he's a smart child <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so I think the um, it's it was fast but at the same time it does feel like you're in the journey for a long time and it can go really slow and you want it to go faster but you know you just have to be patient and know that you know you do everything in your power to um, put yourself out and, and hopefully someone sees something of you that they want to help you yeah well thank you so much for for joining and sharing it's thank you for sharing your raw emotions mm -hmm. and then having this <laughs> child run around hey cameron come over here cameron one more say, say one hi. more time say hi one more say bye bye hey come to uncle nathan bye bye okay come here you can say bye bye. Oh, bye, -bye. Yeah. bye, -bye. Okay, we're gonna say bye bye, okay? Bye bye. Say, give me a little brother or sister. <laughs> Anybody who would like to. Oh gosh. <laughs> if you would like to bless these two men with another one of these, please contact us at Proud Fertility. Or right, I hope this um, video has resonated with you a little bit. Um, whether you're an intended parent, knowing wherever you are in your process, if you've had a recent loss, or you're waiting for a match, for example, that um, stay hopeful because yes. good things happen and come to those who wait. Okay, this is Nathan Chan from Proud Fertility, a surrogacy agency in Canada. Thank you so much for joining us.